Hello everybody, welcome back to Herbie's Garage. Today I'm gonna to be tearing apart my carburetor and putting some new parts in it. I bought these rebuild kits off of eBay. Uh, they're supposed to be K&L original, it said, <laughs> rebuild kits. Um, originally these are made in Japan. I think these were probably made in China. Um, I rebuilt my other carburetor already. Well, I went through and what I did was um, I looked at the main jet and the pilot jet. Looks like the holes were different size, smaller on the new ones. So I did not use them. I reused my old jets. Everything's clean in my carburetor. The problem I found with my carburetor was uh, the diaphragm rubber had a rip in it. So I am replacing that and I will have a video on that. Um, but my carburetor is clean. This one here is probably going to be clean as well. So I'm just going to be replacing the pilot jet. I'm going to be taking the other jets out and cleaning them out. Uh, not the pilot jet, but the uh, uh, um, mixture screw and the um, needle valve and seat and the gaskets. I think that's the only things that I'm going to change and maybe some of the O-rings. That's the only thing I'm going to change on this carburetor, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So here is the pilot pilot. I don't know why I keep calling it that. Here is the mixture screw and it's a D ring or D. It is a D style head on this. And you got to have a special tool for that, which I do have. So I'm going to check and see how many turns this one is turned out. I'm gonna turn it in and see how many it takes. The other one took two and a quarter. There's one. There's two. Huh, that one only took two. So I had one at two and a quarter out and one at two out. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way out. And it's got a needle valve and a spring. So it should have a washer and an O-ring down here at the bottom. There's the washer. It's a little tiny thing, so don't lose it. Right there. And that rubber O-ring. I couldn't get it out of the other carburetor. I just had to blow it out with compressed air. Oh, there it comes. And there's the rubber O-ring. Okay, so now I'm going to take this bowl off of here. This is a seven millimeter socket, or you could use a JIS Phillips, whatever you want to call it. And I do have both. I have a JIS screwdriver right here, which stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. And they do fit better in these screws. They're real close to a Phillips head. And most of the time you could get by with a Phillips head, but a lot of times you end up stripping the heads of these things if you don't have a JIS screwdriver. So if you don't have one, probably be a good idea to get one get uh, several of them actually, different sizes. Okay, as you can see, my carburetor's clean and I figured it was. The only problem I had was a ripped diaphragm and it, it had a little bit of low speed stumble. But now I want to check the float on it before I change this out and put some uh, a new needle and seat on there. 
And my other side I checked, according to the book, it's supposed to be a 7.5 millimeter drop or a setting on this float. Well, I've seen a lot of people on the internet who's done this and they brought it down to where it just barely touches at an angle like that and then measured it. But when I measure mine, when it's flat like this and this gauge is flat like this on there, that it comes out to 7.5 millimeter exactly. So this must be the way to measure it with this flat and with this gauge sitting flat on there to the top of the float. I am exactly at 7.5 millimeter on the money. So when I replace this needle and seat, it's probably gonna have to have an adjustment, which I did adjust the other one because it was a little bit high with that new needle and seat. So I wanted to check it for reference sake because when I put it back in, it's gonna be the same because my bike did run well. So we'll go ahead and take this, um, let's see, we'll take this main jet out. Now I'm not gonna take my main jet off of this emulsion tube or whatever you call it. I'm gonna leave it connected because all I'm gonna do is clean it and there's a washer underneath of this. And if you look through the holes, I'm sure that it's gonna be clean. I'll look through it and I could see through every hole and I could see through the end. So this is clean, but I'm gonna run a little cleaner through it. I'm gonna leave that on there. I'm gonna pop this part here off. This came off a lot easier than the other side. So I'm going to replace these O-rings on here. And let's take out the pilot jet. And here's the pilot jet. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but it's clean all the way through. Yeah, it's clean. So that pilot jet is clean. I'm gonna take this rubber O-ring off of here because it comes with some rubber O-rings. I think it's just not quite as big as these, but as you can see, these things are very fragile. You can see that one's starting to fray, just trying to pull it off. There, I got it off, but that thing wasn't in the best of shape. Okay. And then there's a rubber O-ring on here too I'm gonna to take off. Right there. And that one's the same way. It's got a bad spot on it as well. So, I'm gonna take this and blow through some of these ports. take a little bit of this 
carburetor cleaner is down in the bottom of the bowl. Just kind of wipe stuff down real good. I'm gonna blow this all out. And one place you wanna clean it real good is down in this bore down in here where your throttle plate's at. You wanna make sure that's good and clean. Clean that throttle plate off as well. Clean it up real good. I'm not gonna worry about the outside of the carburetor. It's pretty clean anyway. Just gonna clean everything up on the inside. Which well, like I said, this carburetor is really clean. And once I get all that cleaned up, this bowl here, clean some stuff off of that. Okay, and then uh, I'll take some compressed air and blow through some of these ports. You gotta be real careful on this stuff because you don't wanna blow parts everywhere. Gasket come off. Need to replace that anyway. And I'll we'll blow through this main jet. That's good and clear. Okay. So, let's clean off the work area a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna change the seat. This is a 10 millimeter. That's pretty tight. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I had the same thing happen to the other side. The seat came out with the washer, but there's a screen in there that didn't come out. So I had to use an easy out. And just kind of put it in there to get that screen out. And there it is. And the screen looks fine. Okay, we'll take the seat and install it. Make sure that the washer stays straight. And it's flush. I'm gonna give it just a smidgen more since the other one was so tight. There we go. Now, these little O-rings, I'm gonna put them back on this tube. This is not gonna be an easy thing to do, but we'll get it done. After we drop it a time or two. There we go. We'll take our pilot jet. We'll grab another one of these tiny little O-rings. And with it having that cross in there, I'm gonna try to go 180 degrees off of that so it doesn't fall in the groove. If it falls in that groove, it's gonna make it really difficult to get in. There we go. Now that one's on. We'll put the pilot jet back in. Snug that down. And we'll take our little tube here and slide it over the o-rings see that fits a lot more snug than what the other one did and that's good those o-rings on the other might have been leaking now we'll take our most flying tube and our main jet and i don't have a washer in this kit for this or an o-ring so I'm gonna be reusing what I got. And I gotta tilt it down a little bit so that'll, that washer will stay in a good position. And then just snug it down. Like so, good and snug. Okay, now that's all back together correctly. Now we need to take our new needle valve, put it on our float, which it just, there's a tab on it, on the back side back here. You just wanna take this needle valve and loop it over the top of it and slide it down. And then you just drop your needle valve into the hole. Like I say, I'll probably be taking this back out 
because it probably is going to need an adjustment, but we're going to see. I had to adjust the other carburetor. Okay, let's see where we're at. Yeah, this is the same as the other one. This is a little bit high. So. Put the pin back in. Like so. And check it again. That's what I'm talking about. Check that one out. That looks perfect. Okay, so now that's all done inside there. So we have to pull this seal out of here. And this was glued in just like the other one was. I'm not gonna glue it in when I put mine in, but put it over there at the other. Then I got to try to scrape all the glue out of here. Now right, let's put this in. You know, it's a shame that uh, the jets were like they were. I, I'm just not real happy with this kit. I mean, the the Seals, gaskets, they fit really well, seem to. The O-rings seem like they work. But I'm just not happy at all with those jets. I was afraid that if I put those jets in, it just wasn't going to run good because the holes look smaller. So I had no problem with mine, like I say. So I know it'll be just fine with the old jets in it. They were clean. I just cleaned them out again. So, Okay, so this is all done. Seal's on. I'm just going to pop it on. It's got little locator tabs down here on the bottom of it. And then we'll do it at a crisscross pattern. You hear that noise running in the background? That's my heater. It's uh, not real cold out today, but I think it's in the 50s. And now it's getting later in the day, so it's probably getting close in the 30s again. Just kind of going crisscross pattern on this. A little at a time. Squishing that rubber down, making a good seal. And then go for a final little snug. Don't get gorilla crazy with it. Okay, we got the float level set. We got uh, everything cleaned up, new O-rings, which I think was probably an issue in there. And now we have to put this mixture screw in. Um, go 
things on this side over here. Okay, I gotta see if I got everything out of there. And if we do. So, take our new mixture screw. It's got a little sleeve on it to protect it. Put a spring on it, like so. Put a little washer on it. Like that. And then our little itty bitty, sorry if it didn't show that. A little itty bitty O-ring. This is gonna be hard to get in and not twist it. You just gotta make sure you got it on there nice and straight and push it down like there so, so it's nice and straight. To start out with, and you wanna leave it like that and turn your carburetor up to where you can get in there to it. Take your tool and screw it in. Okay, bottom it out. Bottomed out there. Okay, so there's half. There's one. It's half. And there's two. So that's two full turns. Okay, so the only thing that's left is to put this O-ring gasket in here at the top. It fits in there really nice. Okay. That's what it looks like. Both of them are done. Both of them have the carburetors set perfectly. The mixture screws are both at two turns out. The float is set at uh, 7.5 millimeter on both. Change some O-rings, change the seals. They're ready to go. Now all I need to do is get my diaphragms, which I'm waiting for. So in my next video, I'm gonna be putting these two carburetors together and getting it ready to install once I get my diaphragm. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.